Okay, so today we're finally going to convert the WF7720 from a traditional dye based printer to a dye based sublimation printer. Not much difference, huh? Although it sounds technical, it's really just changing cartridges. And if I can do it, then you absolutely can do it too. First thing you want to do is buy some sublimation ink that's formulated to work with the Epson 7720. Dollars to donuts, any sublimation ink you buy will have been manufactured in China. These manufacturers will have resellers in almost every country. When seeking a reseller, it's important to pick someone with a good reputation. Check their ratings and reviews. I won't say who I bought this ink from because I want to work with it first before I say, hey, this is a great ink from a great seller. When ordering the ink, you can either choose pre-filled cartridges or you can choose like we did, bulk inks with an empty cartridge. I think it just gives you flexibility with experimenting with the inks, having that extra on hand. The package I got included one black T252XL cartridge, which is an extra capacity black cartridge, and three 252 standard capacity cartridges for the colors. In my estimations, the black cartridge carries three times more ink than the standard size cartridges. Four 10 milliliter syringes, and of course the inks. You're gonna get yellow, black, also known as key, cyan, and magenta. You will have a few size options when you order your inks. You can get smaller kits to test how the inks from whatever supplier you choose works in your system, or you can get the bigger size like we did. That's so we can do plenty of experiments, AKA goof up, without having to worry about reorders and wait time. And most times it's cheaper per milliliter to buy bigger. A while ago, we talked a little bit about monitors, light, and the RGB color space. You will notice the inks you received are not red, blue, and green. That's because printed color really is an illusion meant to trick your eye. The RGB color space used in monitors and video displays is an additive color space. You can achieve a wide variety of colors just by adding more light at different frequencies. You'll remember in elementary school, you had those primary red, green, and blue color charts. On those charts, the overlap of the primary colors were the secondary primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Here on the overlap between the red and the green is yellow. With pixels, light is emitted without any absorption before it reaches your eye. So red and green light mixed in the transparent between the source and your eye combined to create yellow light. I tried to recreate it here, but my light wasn't strong enough to pick up on video the yellow color. But here in this photo, you can see the light mix creates yellow when it's projected onto the white paper. Now, if you move to a physical medium like printer ink or paint, when you mix red and green together, you'll get a muddy mess. This occurs because ink or paint is an absorbing medium. Of the two mediums, light emits without absorption, while paint reflects but also absorbs light frequencies. If we go back to the red, green equals yellow equation, in a physical paint world, green paint absorbs blue and red light while reflecting green light, and red paint will absorb green and blue light and reflect red light. When you mix them, you're mixing two mediums that are essentially absorbing all color but reflecting a little bit of red and green. So the result is this muddy color that has some notes of red and green. To achieve color in the printing world, you have to make two changes. Since adding colors creates blackness, you must subtract color in order to make other colors. This subtractive color space will have to use the opposite of red, green, and blue colors, which would be those combined colors, cyan, yellow, and magenta. And the second change would be how the ink is placed on the paper. Halftone involves your graphics program changing your picture into a series of tiny dots for the printer. These dots vary in size, number, saturation levels, and angles to reproduce a wide variety of colors. Here when you mix the two printer inks, cyan and yellow, you'll get green. It'll be a very muddy green, and it won't represent the wide array of green colors. The amount of ink involved with printing blocks of colors layered over each other to create more complex colors would cause wet paper, long drying times, the potential of smudging, and more expense for buying larger quantities of ink. With halftone, tiny dots of color are placed on the paper so close together that they appear to be a block of color to the eye. So less ink is used, drying times decrease, along with any potential smudging disasters. So printing, in reality, is an optical illusion. Now, let's get back to the conversion. 
First, I laid down some plastic bags and some paper towels in case of any spills. Then you're going to prep everything, start with the needles, get them all connected. The needles just snap in and I would just go ahead and use one syringe for each color instead of trying reusing one and saving. Gloves are highly recommended. I've changed other ink cartridges and thought I knew what I was doing and whoop, the air hole let me know I didn't know what I was doing and I'd have ink on my hand for a week. So gloves are highly recommended. And to prove it, here are the gloves after I've finished. You don't need eagle eyes to see these aren't the same gloves. I ended up using latex gloves because the cleaning gloves were too thick and I couldn't feel my fingers. Here are the cartridges and that extra large black one. It wasn't required by the ink seller, but I went ahead and rocked it back and forth to make sure it was completely mixed. Here we have the cyan. The top hole, that's the fill hole. This is where you're going to inject the ink. The bottom plug with the matching color tab is the air hole. Also, don't peel the plastic seal on the nozzle hole on the bottom. The print head inside the printer will have a piercer that will pierce the plastic when you place it inside. The ink seller says fill it up all the way. I'm always worried something's going to go wrong, so I only fill it up with 10 milliliters here. But normally, fill it all the way up. Since I was recording this, I didn't immediately put the uh, cartridge in the printer. So I went ahead and plugged both holes up and stood them upright so they didn't spill out. Now repeat it with the rest of the colors. Since the black cartridge is larger than the standard size color cartridge, about three times the size, I filled it three times with these 10 milliliter needles. You're going to use the settings menu to start the process of replacing the cartridges. Next when installing the inks into the printer, make sure the matching color plug is in the injecting hole and that you leave the air hole on the bottom unplugged. I had both holes plugged in after filling to prevent spilling because I'm clumsy and I was filming. I would not recommend this. 
With both holes plugged, the air pressure built up in the cartridge and it sprayed ink when I unplugged it. So I would recommend that you fill the cartridge and install them right away into the printer. And when you're putting them in, make sure you push down toward the top of the cartridge until you hear a click sound. Close the top and at this point the printer will initialize. You might get an error message, a warning about using non-Epson inks. Dismiss these warnings. It will ask you if you want to proceed and that's what you're going to do. After that's cleared away, next you're going to run a head clean for all colors. This is run to get the old ink out and the new sublimation inks circulating within the printhead. This is gonna run for a few minutes. After it's finished, you wanna print a printhead nozzle check. The printhead nozzle check won't use a lot of ink. It's just gonna print a series of connected columns and lines. If your lines are broken, and they will be broken, Run the head clean for all colors again, then print the nozzle check again. You will keep doing this cycle until you have unbroken black, cyan, magenta, and yellow lines. I had to do it 10 times. When you finally do get the unbroken lines, then you're ready to go and you can start experimenting with your sublimation inks. Lastly, clean up. To store the other cartridges, I tape the nozzle holes. And place them in a plastic bag. And there you have it, the incredibly difficult printer conversion. In our next video, we will do our first sublimation press. We'll explore why it was a mistake for us to buy a bunch of cotton t-shirts on sale. And the most magical of fabrics from the 1970s, polyester. Thank you for making it all the way to the end, and I hope you come back.